Hi there, and we are, this is day 23 of the 30 lessons I've learned in 30 years of ministry. Like I said in one of the lessons, I've learned far more than 30 lessons, all right? But I'll just share uh, the 30 lessons I believe we can put out into the public space there and in 30 years of ministry. All right, so there I want to speak about something and I want people to really understand this. And it's a covenant that God gave to Abraham upon which was hinged the fulfillment of the promise that he made to Abraham that if father of many nations I will bless thee and all of that. And I want to explain what that covenant is and how it works within your life. And he was 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him. He says, I walk before me, be thou perfect. And he said, uh, I am the almighty God and be thou perfect. And I'll make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. So it was through the covenant he was going to make with him that the multiplication was going to come. And Abraham fell on his face and said, as for me, this is my covenant with thee. Thou shalt be a father of many nations, neither shall thy name be called Abraham no longer, but Abraham for a father of many nations. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful one, I will make nations of thee two, and kings will come out of three. And I will establish my covenant between me and thy seed, after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant. So this was an everlasting covenant he made. That's why Paul said, the covenant which God made with Abraham in Christ Jesus, that's what he said, is eternal. The law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that covenant. So the covenant was made 430 years and he says it was made in Christ Jesus, okay? And we are the seed, says to Abraham and to his seed where the promise is made. Not seeds as of many, but as of one. And that seed was Christ. And he says, we are his seed. So he says, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations. So this covenant holds in this generation. For an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed. And I will give unto thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I'll be their God. And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, and thy seed after thee in their generation. And this is the covenant that they will keep between me and you and thy seed. Every man child shall be circumcised. So it was a covenant of circumcision. Now you say, well, I mean, you're saying for circumcision becomes none. That's all we're saying here. The covenant of circumcision is what Paul spoke about when he said circumcision is not outward. And a real Jew is not outward, but circumcision is of the heart in the spirit, whose praise is not of men, but whose praise, he said this, is of God. And he said that, let me just pull out the scripture in the book of Romans chapter 2, I believe, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which one is outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which one is inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but his praise is of God. And in the book of Philippians, he says, we are of the true circumcision that worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. So there is a true circumcision, and that circumcision is a spiritual circumcision. And it is the same painful process that a child goes through when the foreskin of the flesh of that child is removed. It's the same process here of removing the carnality in the person, where a person doesn't judge things by the sight of their eyes or hearing of their ears, but that flesh has been removed. And a reality to them is not what they see with their eyes, hear with their natural ears, but reality to them are the spiritual things. It is what Paul spoke about when he said that our light affliction, and that's the circumcision, that affliction, walketh for us an eternal weight of glory, while we look not to the things that are seen, 
but to the things that are not seen. In other words, he was telling Abraham this. This is the covenant. If you will keep your eyes on the things that are not seen, rather than the things that are seen, then all these things that I've said to you will be fulfilled. That you may be 99 years old, but if you keep your eyes on the unseen, he says, then you will, things will work out, you'll be exceedingly fruitful. That's the covenant here of circumcision, like unto what we said yesterday in terms of meditation, where he said, I will speak peace to the people in answer to their prayer. He said, let them not turn again to folly. In other words, go back to looking at things as they are in the natural, rather than looking at it as God himself has said or has shown you in his word. That's the covenant where he says that the spirit of God, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We all with an open face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into that same image from glory to glory. So it is a steadfast gaze all right, at the price of your flesh, which means that there's a temptation to want to look to the things as they are in the natural. But you decide to stay focused and you are looking at things as they are in the realm of the spirit. Is what Jonah practiced when he said, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy or that covenant. He says, but I will sacrifice with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. So it's a person there focusing there. So once he told him, a father of many nations have I made thee. Kings were coming out of thee. And he promised him, he said, you'll be exceedingly fruitful. What was saying, change the picture you have of yourself. See yourself now, not the way you are, but as a father of many nations. See all those nations that I have promised you with you. See kings all around you on the table and see yourself as being exceedingly fruitful. Thank me for the reality of those things. Praise me as though those things. To rejoice means to enjoy the feeling of being in possession of something that has not materialized. Enjoy the feeling of being in possession of it. That's why he says we have the true circumcision. He says we worship God in spirit. We rejoice, not in physical manifestations, but in Christ Jesus. It says we worship God in spirit and in truth. And it says we have no confidence whatsoever in the flesh. So this is the covenant that God gave to Abraham. And this is the secret to it. Peter was walking on water. He was fine when he was looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith. But once he took his eyes off and started looking at the evidence, which is the wind that was boisterous, he began to sink. So the covenant of circumcision means I'm walking in the reality, and that reality means I'm walking in the consciousness, and I'm being influenced now, not by the world as it appears with my five physical senses, but the world as described to me in the scriptures. The only way in which you can access and remain in that particular place is through the art of meditation. That is, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night. You become what you are looking at. What you are today is what your inner eyes are seeing, what your consciousness is latched onto. So if you don't want something to happen again within your life, remove your consciousness from that particular thing and latch it onto something else, which is God's word. This is what I, uh, Jacob understood about the covenant, that he presented before the animals an image of what he wanted their body to become and to produce. And exactly that's what he produced. That's why when he was 99, his body was able to produce that because he was looking at the image that God had given to him. What you are, what you are not consistently looking at will not, all right, happen in your life. So God does nothing but first of all reveals it to the people he wants to do it through so that those people can now receive it into their lives through deep meditation on his word and constantly beholding it and interacting within their consciousness with the reality of that particular thing 
and then it begins to take shape in their lives. I hope that helped you. We will continue tomorrow on this subject. Don't forget, thought to the eighth. That's when we have the celebration proper. We have many surprises. All right, there, I've asked all ministers to just share the lessons they have learned in all their years of ministry, how they overcame challenges, what those challenges were, and the steps they took to overcome those challenges. The secret of men and the stories to tell. God bless you all.